Welcome everyone. Um, this session will be on business models for clusters in 2021. Um, I'm not quite sure why we added the year, but um, I think it will be um, an interesting discussion for the next couple of years. Um, as I was diving into the subject uh, for the last couple of days, um, I ran into more or less more and more issues and problems and challenges that I face. So um, I would like to discuss these um, to a certain extent with the group and um, let's see how we're running on time. If we, if we want to do something in a Miro board or not, or just keep it in, in an open discussion, that's all fine with me. Um, I think I'm pretty aware of the fact that not everybody might be very familiar with clusters or the background of clusters. Um, so let me tell a little bit about clusters and what, what I do basically uh, for a living as a cluster manager. Um, and I think it's, it's a puzzle we need to solve uh, for, uh, for the business model uh, challenge. Um, so we've, we, of course, we're doing this in groups and, and with many, many different stakeholders. Um, and the way I see it, I work uh, for an organization called Help Valley Netherlands, which is a traditional cluster organization. Um, and um, I can't see how many people are in the group right now. Adelina, maybe you can, you can tell how many people are here now in this group. Yes, we are 13 in total. 13, okay. Yeah. Um, just a quick uh, shout, how many of those people are familiar with clusters? Is that is that two or three, or four or five, six or seven? I don't know how we, how we could get that number, but maybe Adelina, you can you can watch the chat and just, just whisper it to me, uh, basically. Yeah. Um, but uh, again, Health Valley Netherlands, it's, it's a cluster in the eastern part of the Netherlands. It's a life science and health cluster. I've been working here for about uh, six years. And prior to that, I was a project manager for large healthcare organizations and other consulting areas um, in, um, in service, service delivery and, and service organization type uh, companies, consulting companies. So I made quite a turn transition for myself coming from a, from a hardcore blue suit consulting company to um, the more or less soft market of healthcare. And that was interesting to see how healthcare was, was using strategy, et cetera, et cetera. This is, I'm, I'm talking about now 10, 12 years ago. And a lot of the projects I did were IT related and, and change management related. And more or less from that, I, I moved towards more strategy based and innovation based um, issues and then I came in contact with this cluster organization and I moved there six years ago. Basically always doing uh, projects on the part of, of, um, of uh, transition and, and transformation. So what was interesting, um, if, if, if I'm at a party uh, or a birthday party and I need to tell somebody what I do as a cluster manager, that's always a bit difficult. Um, but I think the easy uh, way to explain this is, is that it's a lot of things. It's, it's part project management, it's part change management, innovation management. Um, obviously, our cluster is made up of partnerships. We have some 250 partners. So there's basically also something that you would refer to as account management. We have uh, five innovation managers. That's the role. And we have our partners as a kind of account. So that, that's also what we, what we do. Um, so that is basically the challenge of, of the cluster itself. So what is that innovation manager role? It's, it's a lot of things. Um, and from a day-to-day -day, uh, view, it's, it's anywhere between managing projects, talking to customers, talking to partners, and building more or less consortia of uh, partnerships of the different partners and, and bringing products to market valorizing uh, new uh, product development and, and landing it into uh, the healthcare organization. So that's basically um, the work that we do. Um, and the challenge 
Um, well, basically the challenge um, as, as I see it now is um, making sure how this concept of a super cluster that we are talking about within strategy tools, how that will land into a traditional uh, cluster organization like Health Valley itself. Um, and as I was testing that idea and I was shaping my own perception of super clusters, I was invited to do a talk for the European Cluster Conference um, two months ago. And I thought, okay, let's, um, let's try out this, this new concept of super clusters and, and test it out with a number of cluster managers um, itself. So the audience was, was um, familiar with the cluster concept uh, not so much with the super cluster maybe, but I thought, okay, let's let's try and, and talk them through this paradigm shift in health clusters as I coined it. Um, and just a few slides that I talked about um, at that presentation, I asked them what would they see in this picture? And if you take a look at it, um, you see it's a, a large group of people uh, uh, gathering um, a lot of talk is going on, there's, there's some, some booths, uh, people presenting, there's a lot of uh, coffee drinking uh, as we are in the Netherlands. And um, asking um, the people what did they see, well, um, I can fill this in. This was the last uh, pre-COVID gathering of our annual Health Valley event. Um, and also what you see here is... Um, is the changing business model. Because this is what we used to do um, every year in March. This would be one of our main um, sources of income during the year. Um, this is the largest life science and health gathering in the Netherlands. Uh, some 12 to 1400 people are showing up every year. Um, uh, we were just expanding it from a one day conference to two day. We have plans on, on going to a three-day conference. People pay a lot of money for that. And then actually last year, so in 2020, in March, um, just two weeks before we were running this Health Valley show, um, we went into lockdown. So <laughs> that, was, um, that was pretty interesting because, um, yeah, this was, this was disruption we had no idea. We, we, we did, literally did not know what was, what was hitting us um, because all of a sudden this, this whole event with investments, with uh, uh, appointments, with speakers lined up. Now you can imagine uh, uh, the, the venue was uh, already higher, uh, rented, et cetera, et cetera. So um, at, a, at a large cost, we were, we were canceling this um, this 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 um, this event just just two or three uh, weeks before um, before it was happening. Um, so, as I was presenting this uh, at the as to, at the cl cluster conference, I was always say, also saying, okay, so as a cluster itself, we were we were in need of change. We we needed to to do something else, and we needed to 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 find a quick solution. Um, and basically, of course, like everybody else, uh, we've been doing this for the past uh, year or so. Um, so this is this is just a, the, the traditional triple helix uh, environment uh, that you may or may not have known or, or read about in, in supercluster uh, material of, of strategy tools. Academia, in our case, healthcare organizations and, and industry are moving towards healthcare uh, innovation and, and trying to to bring technology and innovation to, uh, to the market. And um, as we were talking about moving this triple helix model from the 1990s, uh, so almost 30 years old, into a new uh, model of, of the pentagram, um, this was very interesting. And as I was discovering the supercluster material, um, I noticed that, um, that by adding the entrepreneurs and the capital into, um, into the mix. I was basically doing uh, the analysis for our own network. And, um, and we started with COVID lockdown and, and moving this, this, um, this super cluster idea into the, um, into the network. Um, we could 
this this was just just uh, in between lockdowns more or less we could still meet meet and I ran the simulation of the supercluster for a number of stakeholders. So, I did the I did the simulation. I did the um, uh, um, presenting of a supercluster idea for this group, and um, uh, what we did basically also was um, running uh, the supercluster theory through two uh, themes teams of of Help Valley and of the regional development uh, company. So. The, the, the picture on the on the left um, is the, the simulation where we had a number of stakeholders actually in the building and running the simulation. So there was somebody from the regional development company, there was somebody from uh, the municipality, somebody from the uh, University of Applied Science, and some colleagues. And we ran the simula simulation just to to do a test run and, and to have a look and feel how this this would work for the supercluster. And next to that, we ran then we already were moving into the digital world we ran a micro board session on, um, on on developing the ecosystem shaker map and, and getting pictures images of the different teams on how their how they would perceive their ecosystem um, and and the people in um, in that field to um, to be presenting their um, their supercluster and, and their idea of uh, of moving into that space so that is basically a little bit of the journey that we were, that we were doing. So um, I'm really interested in knowing who is here. Um, and I may have to switch back to the Zoom session and look at the participants. Okay, I see uh, Scott, I see Carolina, I see Marcus, Miko, Lieselot, Rick, Harvey, Fabier. And 361 degrees. Okay. Um, so, what what's interesting for me, or what I would like to know, is why did you choose for this session? Um, um, just open open mics uh, uh, to my account. I, I would like to know why why would this why why was was this an interesting session for you? Who would like to respond to that? Scott, go ahead. Hey, Victor, I'll jump in. Um, I wanted to learn more about your work and what you're doing with clusters. I, the brief discussions we had were extremely interesting, and I'd like to understand how you are improving healthcare outcomes um, through the decisions you're taking and the people you're working with. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anybody else want to? Why I came here is that uh, I don't know much about clusters. I've heard of them. So you wanted to get a, some sort of a simple overview of what's happening and how we can help. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Any, any other uh, triggers for, you, for people to join the session? So getting a grip, grab, getting a grip of, um, of the concept of a cluster. Javier? Uh, yes. Uh... We've been working briefly with some clusters here in, here in Mexico, and they would love to work with other clusters around the world. So they want to know what they are doing so they can improve. Okay. Okay. That's, that's, and yeah. Let me respond uh, I was, way on, on that. Yeah, just to say that we don't really have formal clusters here in the U.S. Um, but I'm super curious about how they work and how to potentially engage with clusters in Europe and elsewhere. Okay. Victor, that's very, very similar for myself um, in terms of just understanding a bit more about clusters, but also understanding how clusters um, are happy to get help. They seem, sometimes seem very insular and, and sort of, do they really want support? Do they want others or they want to be known as the, the, the thing. <laughs> Just trying try to understand a bit more about that. It'd be good to get that perspective. Yeah. Okay. Let me let me just let me just continue my my picture sketching of, of clusters and I think I'll answer some of your questions along the way. And if, if you don't get an answer, just just repeat the question. But very briefly, um, getting in contact with clusters and, and how to interact with clusters. I, I understand why that would be difficult from, from, from an outside point of view, because um, like I said, it's, it's, 
it's difficult to explain sometimes to people from the outside what a cluster actually is and how it's how it's built up. And um, obviously, not all clusters uh, are the same. There, you might have read how many clusters there are in Europe and worldwide, and how they um, are financed and how they work and um, uh, Javier uh, said yesterday uh, uh, in his presentation on, on, on Mexico uh, uh, transformation that clusters had a very long tradition in Mexico. Um, and I think that same thing uh, applies here in, in, in the Netherlands at least. And, and another thing that makes it really difficult, I think for in, in the Netherlands, if, if I were to sketch out how small the Netherlands is compared to other countries in the world. And then I would say how many clusters there are or how, how close the clusters are uh, towards each other. And then um, that would be, I think that would be mind uh, boggling for, for, for the outside world. I mean, literally we are here on a campus and just across from this uh, 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 office space, there are two other same kind of entities working on a specific type of cluster. So there's a cluster for semiconductors and there's basically a cluster uh, for transforming or valorizing um, uh, um, knowledge from the university into the market. So uh, um, there's, a lot, um, there's a lot organized in, in the Netherlands, um, not only for clusters, but generally maybe over, over organized uh, country. Uh, <laughs> Um, so I did hear um, some some difference in where you are uh, on the board actually of um, of the supercluster, and that that is all uh, uh, fine. I, I hope I can I can start with the with the really simple uh, cluster uh, themes and then move on to uh, to something else. What 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 I find interesting for um, uh, from the point of view for uh, for clusters and what got me excited for strategy tools itself is that I like the strategy design approach of it. I'm very, um, um, been very active with design thinking and, and uh, for, the, for the last couple of years. So I like the visual touch and look and feel of, of the whole uh, spectrum of the strategy tools uh, tool set. And um, also having used other design thinking models in in my cluster work, I find that it's very necessary um, to to develop some what I always refer to as a common language for the stakeholders of the group itself. And and just to go back a little bit, have even in bringing the teams together from the regional development agency and the Health Valley team itself, and working with a Miro board and, and a digital canvas. Um, also, there is a difference in where the people are on the board. You would expect um, that after nine or 12 months of lockdown and, and, and this, this rapid working from home and all, all things digital, um, I still find it striking that there's a huge, it, there seems to be a huge gap on where people are in, in using their digital tool set. Um, and I think that's also something that we need to keep in mind for ourselves as, as, as the strategy tools uh, group of people, so to speak, that I think a lot of people out, out there, outside, are, are really still struggling to, to, to uh, get a grasp, grip of, of this new reality. Um, but I think visual tool sets help really in, in, in getting people literally on the on the same point of view so that's what i uh, i really like and um okay. the visual tool set um and, and and strategy or strategy design thinking um most often or often uses a frame like how might we and how might we uh, type questions open up uh, possibilities and open up the discussion so if you were to phrase a design challenge or, or any type of challenge on, on what you want to, uh, to solve as a, as a consultant or, or working with this, with this tool set is asking how might we questions. And for 
uh, for this talk, for this, this, this presentation, I would say how might we develop better or different business models for clusters? That, that is really an interesting um, uh, type of question. And um, I think I'll, I, I, I can say it fair enough to say that we are not there yet. Um, it's, it's, I don't have the answer yet to, um, to the different or better business models for, uh, for clusters, but I'm hoping that by um, explaining a little bit more on, on my world and how clusters work, hopefully we can some sort um, get a coalition of the willing or a small working group in further developing this, this, um, this, this feel around clusters and how we, how we, can, how we can develop and, and help them. Um, <clears throat> so a little bit about, about the journey so far. Um, I started Strategy Tools Global Coaching in November 2019 and then went to the master training in January 20 with the simulation for, uh, for the, um, um, for the scale up, um, the, the building the transitional company um, simulation. So um, I really took a deep dive into it. And um, what I still find very interesting and, and still I know very little of to my uh, feeling is um, in the five pillar set for clusters where we are talking about entrepreneurship and capital, capital in Health Valley as an organization, uh, so, so VC funding and venture capital and, 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 and uh, funding startups and, and building on that entrepreneurship. That is really two missing pillars in, in the whole concept of, uh, of Health Valley. And that is also very, um, very much the, um, the part that we need to uh, further um, develop in, in the cluster itself. Um, so the certifications help the TCI conferences. I think Javier also mentioned it already. There's a global conference uh, or there's a global organization on clusters. Um, they have yearly conferences. I think I saw Chris running around last year in, in Antwerp, um, also there. And um, um, that helps in, in getting a grip of, of what clusters are. I told you about the European Cluster Collaboration Platform. Um, I think it's only open basically for, for cluster organizations. Um, but still, um, um, though there's a lot of organization around around clusters and um, what's what's um, what's striking is the, the difficulty for me of, of, of cracking the code more or less or solving the puzzle for these um, for this this cluster business model um, I see a lot of challenge in in clusters in my own organization but also in other clusters so so finding out what is working and what is not working. We had some cluster um, uh, micro board sessions with people from, uh, from Canada and also with, with the cluster leadership uh, program. Um, and um, that was nice to notice that we are not alone in, in trying to find these new business models. It's really a tough way of, um, of, of, of trying to solve uh, the puzzle. Um, Let's see. Um, what would be interesting <clears throat> is um, uh, to maybe work on a Miro board and, and try to find out how we could develop uh, different business models um, for, for clusters. Um, but also um, what struck me is when we did the transformation uh, simulation, uh, the first day, um, we talked about um, how we get absorbed by the day-to-day -day routine. Uh, in the simulation, we talked about the CEO role, and um, and, and and especially when when everybody was 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 working on um, on, on basically solving their own problems, uh, cracking the code and solving the puzzle. Um, we tend to forget to step back and and look at the grander picture and and see how we can. How we can solve this actually, and and 
this is really what I am struggling with in, in my own day-to-day -day routine. Um, so it's not only difficult to, um, to analyze the problem of solving the business model puzzle for clusters, but also combining that with your day-to-day -day routine and then also explaining it to people um, that are in your stakeholder community of the cluster. So um, just to give you a, a, an example or an overview, um, the cluster here has people from the university, has people from the general large university medical center. So doctors, physicians, uh, nurses. Um, it has people from the University of Applied Science. It has entrepreneurs. It has uh, startups. So to, to, um, to explain this, this role of moving to a super cluster idea and getting the entrepreneurship and the, and the, and the venture capital pillars into that model, it's, it's, I wouldn't say it's, it's maybe a, a, a daytime job uh, to, to explain it uh, to, to other people. And um, what I've noticed and, and what, what I've experienced also in running that simulation with the, with the, with the small the test run of the simulation for the superclusters with just the four stakeholders, in the aftermath of discussing that simulation and how, how it helped them to, to have the uh, image and, and the view of the supercluster, we also came to uh, um, the idea and the conclusion that um, maybe we shouldn't push too hard to explain the concept of, su of supercluster because a lot of the times when, we, when, when I try to explain the supercluster and I get enthusiastic and say, okay, we already have a lot of this stuff in place. We just need the entrepreneurship or we just need the VC pillar and we could grow into the supercluster. There's a lot of resistance because people A, do not yet understand the concept of the supercluster. B, um, like I said, there's already a lot of um, things organized. Eh? So there's a lot of different um, small or larger clusters or type organization or network organization or innovation parks or creative hubs or workspaces. It's all here, basically. It's just not really well connected and working together to that bigger goal. So I basically, I came to the realization with one of the managers from the regional development agency is not to push the concept of supercluster too hard, but just work on the coalition of the willing where we find the energy and the people enthusiastic of putting stuff together and just build from that and, and use it like some sort of an oil spill. And just in that discussion, get the concept of the supercluster worked in. Because if we, if I would were to present some to some people from the province that basically pay for our budget in the cluster, the concept of a supercluster and the, um, the timeline of, of 10 plus years in developing it, um, that would simply not work. Um, it will not work because the politician timeline is only four years in the Netherlands. So in the four year period, there will be a new uh, provincial government um, and, and they will not govern over a period of, uh, of more than four years. So it will be very hard to get a concept of, um, of setting a roadmap of 10 years plus uh, that we have this really nice a cluster development roadmap where we have um, different areas of cluster models in the middle. So year one, two, three, four, five, six, etc. If you were to use that, it's it's a brilliant visual aid of of um, of explaining the whole concept of the supercluster. But the politician that actually is is paying a large part of the budget for the cluster organization of Health Valley would just say, okay, I can maybe help you, but I can only help you for two to three years or maybe four years. So that's a really interesting uh, challenge. Um, it did get solved uh, though, however, um, but that only happens in a really, really, really big crisis. One of the, the areas where, um, uh, where they did uh, 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 
transcend over the four year period and move into a 10 year period is the development of the Brainport high tech campus around Eindhoven. But that really had to do with moving away the automobile industry and moving away of Philips uh, with the large factories. And then there was a sudden economic crisis and then they had to, to come up with really something uh, uh, smart and then they said, okay, let's build this high tech campus. And then they said, okay, we'll fund it for more than four years. And they actually um, did uh, fund it for, for 10 years and, and more. So it is possible, um, but you have to have, like it's also mentioned in the, in the, in the, in the supercluster uh, um, uh, book, um, you have to have visionary uh, government to to see that larger picture and 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 are willing to um, to move beyond that four uh, year period cycle. Um, so there is an interesting roadmap. Um, it's difficult to insert it in in the real life job. Um, it has to do with explanation to coworkers to others, um, but it does help to have that visual tool set, like I said before, the, the, the common language. If, if I uh, use this cluster of change roadmap, um, it, the, the story unfolds uh, um, in front of your eyes. So, so I'm very, very much a fan of that. Um, but still, uh, this will help to get everybody talking about the same definitions and ideas and concepts. Um, and it would make it um, really nice to to have a system like strategy tools take away the confusion of of this um, of this equation of what is the definition of the innovation supercluster uh, and where does it compare to the ecosystem or the accelerator or the innovation district um, so that is still an ongoing process and um, in my experience um, I feel I shouldn't run ahead too much uh, uh, in front of the troops because I will lose, literally, I will lose the, the audience behind me on what the supercluster is. So my strategy for that is at least to build up uh, a, a small group of, of, of like-minded people and where there's um, a coalition of the willing to, to build on that supercluster. Um, so, um, like I said, the business model, um, the challenges and, and, and the, um, the challenge for changing the business model lies basically in, in these three parts. This is basically how um, a traditional business model for the cluster works. You have public and private funding from projects and, and, and partnerships and, um, and, and some clusters work um, at least in Europe, they work in large European programs and they can find funding there. The interesting part of, um, of the partnership uh, model is um, um, a little background information. How are we on time? Well, we still have some time. Um, the interesting part from the partnership model um, is we um, are funded uh, approximately 80 to 70 percent come from public funding from our provincial government. Our provincial government sold their energy supplier a couple of years ago and we are a very rich province because those billions are um, in a bank account and they do all uh, nice things with it. Um, one of the nice things is, is funding Health Valley, so very, very nice. Um, so for years, we were um, um, not really in need of, of thinking um, along the lines of, of partnership and partnership fees. And we had a flat fee for everybody from, from a startup to, to a large corporation, and they would all pay 500 euros for a year. And they would get access to all the events. They would get access to the Health Valley event. They would get tickets. They would get the networking events when we did networking events, uh, we did 25 to 30 a year, et cetera, et cetera. So really like value, um, totally out of whack, eh? uh, uh, meaning uh, a price way too low for the value that was, that was delivered. 
Um, the funny thing that happened was uh, go new government came in after the four year period. Uh, there was new provincial government. They said, okay, maybe we should tweak these, uh, these clusters a little bit and a lot of money is going in there, blah, blah, blah. Um, let's bring them down on their public funding and see what happens. So they did. And we, this happened two, two and a half, three years ago. And we thought, okay, we're getting less public funding, so we oh, uh, um, we need to find some uh, some private uh, uh, market access. And what we did basically is build a new partnership model, um, a very common one um, that is used based on the size of the company or the partners that are involved. You 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 give them a higher uh, partnership fee. So the large corporations would jump from 500 to 5,000. And we thought, oh, they will run away. They will not pay for it, et cetera, et cetera. Um, they did, however. Um, so the nice thing was that our partnership fee increased many times and we were able to do a lot of extra things with that extra money. Um, and the, 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 uh, the, the counterintuitive thing happened. Um, we we, we, um, we um, hired the partnership fee, and therefore we also hired the perceived value of the partnership itself. And this had a really nice effect that now the partnerships were much more felt as a real partnership. So the partner, uh, let's say a large corporate uh, or a large uh, organization like the University Medical, Medical Hospital said, okay, now we're paying five, a thousand euros what are we getting for those five thousand euros so there was a lot more commitment of the partnership in the network itself so if 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 you are to think about the business models for clusters um, and you think okay i need to bring in more money um, it could very well feel counterintuitive um, um, but actually it for us, for Health Valley, it worked out. It turned out really well because the commitment and the the engagement of the partners rose because the perceived value was much more uh, like before. And they said, "Okay, in this partnership deal, I am entitled to this, this, this." So, um, when is the account manager, the cluster manager, coming over to talk about the account and the development, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. So that was really interesting to um, to see. Um, okay, um, maybe let's open up the mic again. Um, if people have questions, um, this would be uh, a good point. I think we still have about 10 minutes. Uh, Adelina, is that correct? Uh, yes, about 20. About 20, okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, Javier Victor, wants to say. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, Victor, I think that it's really interesting and the relevance of uh, why clusters no, uh, need the uh, new business models uh, lies in the in the fact that uh, as well as uh, corporates and general all uh, companies now things are changing for clusters as well. I mean, uh, what we've Thing is that clusters were like in a pretty comfort zone where basically, I mean, they had like a secure uh, funding, but now, I mean, as uh, economies are uh, in general, uh, corporations are facing tough times, they question, I mean, why should I still be part of uh, a cluster? Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think that the uh, uh, like an interesting way to relate the need of these uh, no business models and why a super cluster uh, view on, 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 cl on clusters is interesting is because if you are able to like uh, relate uh, the, this super cluster view with the uh, core uh, growth and explore framework of strategy, I mean, Superclusters is a pretty nice way to help clusters explore a uh, new uh, competing arena, okay? So it's a way to help them like uh, build their uh, future growth, okay? So I, I think that uh, like that might be a really interesting way to link uh, 
why superclusters make sense for uh, like traditional clusters, and the other part is like uh, show them how we can help them. Okay, um, because because otherwise, I mean, when what we tried in 2019 uh, when we first uh, contacted some clusters was, hey, you know what? We have this pretty amazing framework and tools and all that stuff, but we didn't get any traction. I mean. That's mm -hmm. not what they wanted to hear or what they thought they needed. But if you are able like to change the narrative, I mean, they begin like to uh, be interested on what uh, super cluster view can bring to the table. Yeah. Um, as, as I was uh, as I was contemplating on on, I was chewing on the solution and and the things and. I, 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 I'm a paper type guy, so I write out a lot of things. And um, one of the things that that um, that struck me also by watching the other uh, presentation over the last uh, couple of days, and, and for instance, if you would take the transformation triangle, huh, you remember the, the 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 cash profit and the new business models and the analyst ratings. So that triangle that made me think also about as I was writing down the strategy design and the design thinking method, there's like three lenses of innovation strategy within design thinking. And they're, they're called desirability, feasibility, and um, uh, um, desirability. And if those three intertwine in the middle, there's a sweet spot. Um, and I thought, okay, like we're also trying to, to balance that we're trying to balance that triangle within transformation by looking at the new business models and, and, and the cash profit and the analyst ratings. Combining that with the idea of the sweet spot from design thinking, I thought, okay, is, um, is the transformation of a cluster really different than, than a corporate transformation? And I thought, Maybe it's not that that different. Maybe it's it's even a bit uh, similar to 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 at least the idea of the transformation. So the narrative for me, or the way I try to explain the supercluster idea and the transformation, the paradigm shift from the triple helix model into that pentagram model, is um, it's more or less. Um, like I said, Health Valley is, is the traditional triple helix and it needs to move more toward the entrepreneurship and the, and the, and the, the venture capital pillar. Um, it's not to say that we don't have those. They're not just as linked as such to the triple helix cluster of Health Valley. So it's not really missing. It's just not linked that well into the to the triple uh, triple helix of, of health value. So my narrative is that um, there is entrepreneurship, there is VC capital in the vicinity of health value. We just I just need to link them to the idea of the cluster itself. So I need to um, I need to entice the entrepreneurs on healthcare innovation to see the value of the other three parties in the existing triple helix. And I need to find the VC funds that have interest in supplying early stage uh, healthcare uh, innovation startups. When I um, was also talking to Christian about all this and the business model, et cetera, et cetera, and um, uh, he triggered me in saying, um, but do you know your VC funds in the in the neighborhood? And I had to admit I, I never looked at it because I, I had no um, I also had no uh, need for it. Uh, I had no knowledge of it, but also had no need for it. Like you said, uh, Javier, the, some of the clusters are are a bit spoiled because the uh, either they're funded by uh, the government or they're funded by their partnerships, and there's no real inclination yet to 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 um, to trigger uh, the VC market in, in supplying funds to the, to the entrepreneurship type startups and scale-ups and, and bring those 
um, rapid innovations into um, into the uh, into the rest of the triple helix. So, the for me the narrative is that um, when when I was trying to early on when I was trying to try and explain the supercluster and enthusiastically saying oh we should go on this ten year roadmap and and built to the supercluster and blah, blah, blah. And I was meeting the resistance that made me change uh, the narrative more towards, um, this is not a new train we're starting. This is not a new um, a train, a riding train that you should hop on. Um, it's more trying to find the other wagons and hook them on to the all riding, already riding train. That, that metaphor uh, I use to explain that um, the supercluster for me as, as, a, as, a, as a theory is not something new in this, in this region, in this economic development. It, I just see it as, um, as a way of explaining um, that the missing pillars from the pentagram, need, I need to get them a little closer to the, to the, to the, to the, um, to the old, triple helix of, of health value. Hey, that's, that's the way I, I see it now. Sorry, I interrupted you there, Victor. Um, thank you for that. Um, from your experience of working in a cluster, do other clusters have the same desire to become, uh, they might not call it a super cluster, but to, uh, uh, what, what would you say would be their kind of growth intentions? Are they looking to grow in that way or develop in that way? Or are they looking, I, I'm just interested to know the ambition of the, the, these clusters and, 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 and certainly within now the UK seems to be very separate from everything for some reason, mm -hmm. um, how that, you know, is, there's lots of small clusters around different things. There might be a lot more fishing clusters now, but, um, but I'm just wondering what, what is, what your perspective was and when you sort of maybe spoken to your, you know, counter, your counterparts and other clusters yeah. and things like that. Um, it took us almost two years, maybe three, to change. This is, this is serious. This is really happening. To change um, the fact in our policy document that we were no longer a regional cluster, but a national cluster. Okay. It took us, really, it took us like two and a half or three years to, to get the, the political um, goodwill to, to change that. And it has to do with how Health Valley is funded. So it's funded by a, uh, the, the, the provincial government of Gelderland. Um, and the provincial government of Gelderland wants his money spent wisely as an economic development in the province of Gelderland. And this is really weird because the healthcare and, and, and making healthcare innovation and bringing new products to the market or getting the medication or the new pharma um, from, from, from a large, from, from a small uh, spin out from the university here at the campus to the national market or the global market. That is something that you cannot confine into the province. So that is really, that is really weird. So it took us some time to, and now uh, we are a national life science and health innovation cluster, meaning that we still are a local entity in the region of Nijmegen uh, province of Gelderland, but we have national membership and partners. They're coming from all places and they're coming from all places because they see that something is happening here in the region. So the yeah. magnet function and the attraction of the cluster, when I was reading that also in the supercluster theory, I thought, okay, this, this, is, this is also applying to Health Valley because we did so many active things when we were um, outgoing, we, we did a lot of things with a small team. We're only uh, five innovation managers and, and some people in, 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 the, in the office itself. And the, 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 the things that we turned out on and the 25 events per year, the, 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 the largest Health Valley uh, event uh, every year, also made people realize, okay, we have to look, look at Nijmegen and what's happening there. So 
companies from Amsterdam, Rotterdam came in and said, okay, we want to be a partner of this network because something is going on. So ambition in Health Valley is large, um, but there's a lot of, there's a lot of resistance. Uh, other example, um, we as a province work really uh, on, on a lot of issues with, with the province of Overijssel. So it's an adjacent uh, uh, province. Um, and it's, they actually have one combined um, so-called regional innovation strategy for Europe. It's called Think East. It's a brand that goes out to Brussels and Europe. If you look at the east of the Netherlands, Think East is the strategy portfolio that we're working on. There is a similar, um, a similar type organization in Overijssel. We've been talking to them for a year and a half to merge because we're mm -hmm. doing the same stuff. They are a little more on business development. We are a little more on event and projects. So this would really, really be complementary to each other. It's not happening as of yet. Why? Because there's a province over Rijssel, there's a province Gelderland, a whole bunch of political yeah. resistance, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah. ambition is there. Um, um, I think the only way um, for, I think for, for clusters to, to grow and, and to be more, um, to have uh, more impact is, is to realize that not necessarily they need to be bigger, but they need to, you, you need to have the focus, you need to have the stakeholders aligned around a specific theme. I'm, I'm very mm. firm believer in, in, in bringing focus on the area of what you want to do in the cluster and work from there and then yeah. build the cluster from there. Yeah, that, that, that collaboration and kind of in a win-win situation, I think is really interesting. And actually, it's interesting what you're saying, and I'm just relating it back to the super cluster simulation and how the, to win, you have to collaborate and share and work together. Um, and, and, and I think I, I, I knew that was the case, but to hear it from yourself in terms of that is one of the challenges. And you often see that with, with charities, is somebody set up a charity, there's somebody else already in that space, but they want to make sure that their charity grows, not the other charity. So they always compete and the people that lose out are the beneficiaries. So cool. Thank you for that, Victor. Appreciate your, your, your comments. Yeah, and, 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 and the fun thing is that um, I, don't, I, don't, I don't see the other uh, uh, clusters as a, as a competitor. I, I'm just thinking um, uh, we are here. Eh? <laughs> what is our purpose? as a cluster, the purpose of the cluster is to stimulate economic development on yeah, a specific yeah. area or in yeah. a specific region. That in no way should limit you to, for me, it doesn't limit me to the region of Gelderland or uh, to, to the Netherlands in, in, in that matter, uh, for instance. So, um, um, but th th this is a, this is a, um, uh, um, this is a point of view that that I don't encounter uh, in everyone else, but I I'm a firm believer that that it's just the um, basically it's the economy stupid. I mean I mean that's that's what we need to do. Um, so um, also with um, and this this is another really fun thing in clusters. Eh? So the business model of the projects, the European project funding. It's changing already, I must admit. I mean, when I started six years ago, you could get a fund for a project and you could run the project and there was hardly any KPIs uh, mentioned. More or less, they would say, oh, if, if you finish the budget within time, good job. Do we have to deliver something? I'm, I'm, I'm charging, of course, eh? but uh, do we have to make a deliverable? Nah, it's fine, blah, 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 blah. You see more and more that, that the sustainability and the, 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 the focus is on delivering the result at the end of the project. So the project funding stops, but you need in the project, you need to build the sustainability of the solution. Example, we're just starting a large European project with 30 European partners on building the platform for delivering services in rural areas. Um, it is written in the project 
that the project needs to be self-sustainable at the end. Now, still, we have to see if after three and a half years um, sure. that if, if that will be accomplished. But the mere fact that it's now mentioned in the project file is already 180 degrees different than when I started six years ago. So I think that's a good thing. Um, I also feel that um, the partnership model for clusters will, will, will turn around once more, meaning that um, the partnership fees or the project fees coming into a cluster organization need to flow back to the partnership, to the entrepreneurs and to the companies itself. There's no need for, um, uh, for, for keeping up the, the, the cluster organization if that's all there is. I mean, the, the, the money flow should go yeah. through the cluster organization, but it should land with the companies in the project itself. So that's also a thing that, that you see, and that's why Health Valley is, is sometimes a, a preferred partner in these projects because we have the network of the companies and then the project is, is with a university or a hospital or some, some other nonprofit organization. And they say, yeah, we want to build this project and we, we have science and we have research and development going out into startups and companies and products, et cetera. But we need the entrepreneurs to bring it to the market. Health Valley, can you come in and bring in your network, um, helping us taking the science out of the university into the pro product and the, uh, uh, and the actual market. So that's a nice position to be in, um, but still I think um, it will be, um, uh, yeah, I think, I think Health Valley as a cluster needs to reinvent itself once more in in getting that deal flow or getting that money flow to where um, it actually is most uh, valued. And I think it's most valued when we are able to help the companies literally bring the products to market with the help of, of, of science coming in from the universities uh, or from some other place. But I think that's the, that's the long-term goal of, um, of the cluster itself. Great. Thank you. Thanks, Victor. Are we out of time? Well, almost there. Yeah, two more minutes. <laughs> God. I didn't think I, I could talk about uh, uh, an hour about uh, clusters, but um, I think you could talk a whole day if you wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to do that for a day. <laughs> Are there any um, other last questions, remarks from 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 the guys in the audience? And girls, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I, I, I did write some, some stuff uh, down as, as, as takeaways. Um, can you see still, can you still see the screen? Yep. Okay. It's not easy being green. <laughs> Meaning, um, like I said, if, if you run in front of the troops and, and, and you find this really nice, Thing. I'm, I'm really in love with the, with the super strategy, uh, super cluster strategy stuff. I really think it really opened up my perspective on, on where we can go. But like I said, I need to uh, make sure that I, 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 I bring the guys along in the narrative of, of the super cluster. So sometimes it means not talking about the super cluster and get the train moving. Um, economy stupid, I, I think I explained with, with money flow and, and, and deals for, for the uh, entrepreneurs. One thing, oh, one thing I didn't uh, mention, policymakers need to meet the entrepreneurs. Um, I don't know if you, if you know the, um, uh, the book on the entrepreneurial state, really interesting how, how state government and officials need to need to have more feeling for entrepreneurship, et cetera. Um, and they, they really need to, uh, yeah, need to bring that entrepreneurship also into policymaking. And the common language really, really, really helps. If you want to explain something and you have this visual tool set, um, that makes it all, all, the, all the more uh, easy. I think 
that's it for me. Yeah, perfect. Thank you so much.